Hey everybody, today we're going to be discussing the Ragley Mbop, a long slacked out enduro hardcore hardtail. The Mbop is made by Ragley, a very small bike company out of the UK that's been around since about 2008. Ragley specializes in affordable, aggressive hardtails and components. They have both complete bike builds and frame only options, most offered in both steel and aluminum frames. And while Ragley has many hardtails to choose from, we're going to focus on their most aggressive aluminum hardtail that they offer for 27 half inch wheels. And if anybody's wondering, from my understanding, the name actually comes from a trail in the UK, not from that song from that boy band from the 90s. The Mbob is made from aluminum alloy, and the frame tubing has a beautiful shape, and it's a midnight blue sparkle color that looks stunning in person when the sun's hitting it at the right angle. This is the 2021 frame, and the 2022 frames are either silver, or silver with a purplish pearlescent coating. They're offered sizes small through extra large. It has a 160mm post mount disc brake bounce, a threaded bottom bracket, boost hub spacing, ISCG 5 tabs for mounting a chain guide or bash guard, and a raggedy chain stay protector. The head angle is a very slack 63.75 degrees, and there's 425mm chain stays for all sizes. Just as a side note, the geometry of the 2020 test in the video is identical with the 2022 model. The bike being reviewed today is not the stock build. I'll go over the stock build later in the video, but for now here's a list of the components. The fork is a RockShox Yari with 160mm of travel with fork lockout and rebound adjustment. Nukeproof Sam Hill riser bars with 38mm of rise and an in-house raggly stem. We have the Brand X trail wheel set, which is 28mm internal width. The wheels did come with tubeless tape already installed, so I think you have to do to convert to tubeless is buy tubeless valves. There's a Maxxis DHF in the front and a Maxxis DHR2 in the rear. Both have width of 2.3 inches, but I'll be upgrading to 2.5 in the future. It's a full Shimano build on the bike, starting with the Shimano SLX crank arms, with a 32 tooth 1-up oval chainring, and a 1-up bash guard. There's SLX hydraulic disc brakes, with 180mm rotors front and rear. There's an 11-speed SLX derailleur, with a clutch to keep the chain slap at a minimum, and an SLX 42 tooth cassette. We have a Brand X Ascent 120mm dropper. And finishing off the build is an in house Ragley saddle, DMR Brand Dog Death Grips, Nuke Proof Neutron Pedals, and a 1 up EDC light system. The first part we're going to discuss is the weakest part of the Mbop, and that's the climbing. The bike handles long climbs pretty well, and the seat position is comfortable. But when you go up steep technical climbs, you notice the drawbacks of having such a slack bike with a short rear end. The front end tends to wander and gets light, so to compensate you have to lean a little bit more forward. It's not the biggest deal, and honestly it was expected, but if you want to have some type of cross country racer, this bike is definitely not for you. Now that we got that out of the way, let's discuss why you buy a bike like this. I've ridden a fair amount of hardtails in my lifetime, but I've never ridden a hardtail that just flat out rips like this bike does. Once you get pointed downhill, you just let go of the brakes and just get ready for a rush of speed, and more importantly, fun. This bike is fun whether you're going 10 miles an hour or 30 miles an hour. One part that I was worried about was the aluminum frame. I've ridden aluminum hardtails in the past, and they tend to have a really harsh ride. But the Umbot frame surprised me at how compliant it is, and how it muted out the vibrations, but still staying stiff enough that it had a lot of feeling and feedback coming back from the bike. Luckily, this bike is not just a downhill slayer, it also rails corners. The combination of the long, slacked out front, and the shorter rear end, means this bike maintains front end grip, while the back end slides with confidence. I've had numerous times where I went into a corner, my body position was garbage, but the bike maintained its front end grip and it washed out like my old hardtail would have. The Ragley is also very flickable and twitches directions extremely well. Also, since it's a relatively light bike, it jumps really, really well. To put it simply, this bike is just a straight up hoot to ride. Since I've built this bike, I've been PRing almost all the trails that I ride. It's surprisingly faster than my full suspension enduro bike is on most trails in San Diego. And I now choose this bike over my full suspension 9% of the time. So now that we've discussed how the bike rides, 
let's discuss cost. What we have here is a cost versus value analysis that I created. It's a breakdown of all the parts of the bike so you can determine how much it would cost to build this bike from scratch and determine a value based on the sum of its parts. Just a note before we go over this, that the bike in the video is a custom build, not the stock one. For the breakdown I'm going to be doing, I'm actually going to list the stock build, and I'll just point out the major differences between the two. So at the time of this recording, the complete build and price for the 2022 Ragley Umbop has not been revealed. So for this analysis, I'm going to use the price of the 2021 build, which was $1,700 USD. But I fully expect a price increase for the 2022 when it is available. Here's a breakdown of the total cost of all the parts on the stock complete bike if you're to purchase separately. When you sum all the cost of these parts, it's almost $2,500. So to keep it simple, that means that it, you save around 760 bucks from buying the bike whole as opposed to buying all the parts individually and building yourself. I also told you earlier that I was going to break down the major differences between the stock build and the custom build that's in this video. So there's actually three. The first being is the fork. The custom build has the RockShox Yari and the stock build has a Marzocchi Bomber Z2. Both equally great forks and around the same price. The second big difference is the wheels. On the custom build, they're actually the Brand X Trail wheel set. But on the stock build, they're WTP i30 wheels with nukeproof hubs. I can actually argue that the stock build has much better wheels. The last thing of note is actually pretty minor, but it's the cassette. Both are 11 speeds, but the custom build comes with a 42 tooth, and the stock build has a 51 tooth, which I think is way, way better. Just a disclaimer, and please keep in mind that this is only an estimate. Prices can vary based on cost at the time of purchase and availability. Overall, I think this bike is one of the best values if not the best value for a hardtail bike. The quality and components that you get is amazing, and it's nice to see a company that still makes good, affordable, and most importantly, fun mountain bikes that have you grinning ear to ear. This is my go-to bike when I ride, and the only regret I have is I didn't buy one sooner. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or feel if there's anything that I missed, please comment below. Also, if you have any recommendations of other awesome hardtails, please let us know down below. Thank you so much and have a great one.